When you break down the game of baseball to its simplest form, the overall job of the offense is to hit the ball as far as they can from home plate so they can run around the bases to score. The farther it goes, the more they can run around and score. The overall job of the defense is to get the ball back to the infield as quickly as possible so the offense stops running. But what happens if the outfielders get to the ball and they can't make it all the way back to the infield? That's where the cutoff player comes into play. The cutoff player is an essential part of the game of baseball, but the fundamentals of how to properly cut the ball off is often overlooked. Today's Bullpen Bulletin is all about how to properly cut the ball off. We'll answer a few basic cutoff questions and review the fundamentals and footwork so you can make sure that you get the ball to where it needs to be as fast as possible. Hey team, it's Coach Hart with Building Better Baseball, the best place for baseball education. Thanks for tuning in to today's video. And if you're a youth baseball player or a coach and you'd like to improve your game, you've come to the right place. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel because my weekly videos are meant to help you improve in every aspect of baseball. Also, don't miss my free guides that I'm giving away at the end of this video as my gift to you for stopping by. But now, let's make sure that we know exactly how to be a perfect cutoff player. And number one, we're gonna answer a few questions and that's what is a cutoff player and who is a cutoff player? Before we get into the fundamentals and footwork, I wanna make sure that you know exactly what we're talking about. The first question is what is a cutoff player? A cutoff player is simply a player who stands in between the thrower and the destination of the throw. Their job is to catch the ball from the thrower, who is usually the outfielder, and relay it to the destination, which is usually a base that the base runner is running to. The second question is who is a cutoff player? 95% of the time, the four infielders are the cutoff players. Second base and shortstop are the positions who cut off the most. When the ball is hit to the outfield, the infielder who's supposed to be the cutoff player for that play will go out into the outfield and they'll relay the ball to the base that it's going to. There are some special situations though that rarely happen where one of the other outfielders might be a cutoff player or maybe even sometimes the pitcher might be a random cutoff player, but most often it is the four infielders who are cutoff players. Now that we know what we're talking about and whose job it is, let's dive into the fundamentals and footwork of being a cutoff player. Number two is the setup. The one thing every cutoff player should know is the strength of their teammates' throwing arms who are playing in the outfield. Before the inning starts, turn around and check to see which one of your teammates is playing in the outfield and think about their throwing arm. Do they have a strong arm and can throw the ball well? Or is their arm not too strong and they struggle to throw at a far distance? This information will help you decide where you set up on the field to take the throw. If they have a strong arm, it's okay to put some distance in between you two because you know that they can make that throw. But if they don't have a strong arm, make sure you get closer to them so they can make a throw that you can easily handle. When you go out for a cutoff, the first thing you wanna do is position yourself the best you can between the thrower and the base you're throwing to. You wanna be in as straight of a line as possible. Once you're positioned, you look at the outfielder throwing you the ball and you listen to the player who's at the base where you're throwing it to. Their job is to line you up perfectly with the base. If they want you to move, they will tell you a direction and a number. That's it. If they want you to move left two steps, all they're gonna say is left two. So what does that look like? If I'm going out for a cutoff and I'm going out here, I am first going to check and see and position myself as best I can. Then all I have to do is listen to the player who's at the base where I'm throwing it to. And as I said, to line you up, all they're gonna do is give you a direction and a number. If I'm lining myself up with the camera and I'm out here and I'm here like this and my teammate wants me to move right two steps, all he's gonna do is say right two and then I go one, two, like that. That's all I do. It's way too much to say, oh, move a little left or come a little in or go a little farther out. That's too many words to listen to in that short period of time. All you need is a specific direction and number. So if you want them to move in, you say in three. Or if you want them to move out, you say out two. Or left three, right two. A direction and a number. That's much easier to listen to and much easier to help line up your player. As you're getting lined up, your hands should be as high as possible. Make yourself big so the outfielder knows exactly where they're supposed to throw the ball. Once the outfielder gets the ball and looks up to throw, they should know exactly where they're throwing the ball. The last thing you want to do for the setup is to turn slightly to your glove side. And we'll go into more detail on that in the next point. 
So as you're setting up, if the throw is coming from here and I'm relaying it this way, I'm setting up here, I'm saying here, here, I'm getting big, I'm getting big like this, so the outfielder can't miss me, but I'm also turning slightly to my glove side. So I'm almost standing sideways like this. I don't wanna stand like this, straight on like this. I wanna turn slightly to my glove side and have my target right here. Number three is the catch and the throw. Now you're all set up and the throw is coming towards you. The most important thing you should do is catch the ball on your glove side. You wanna catch the ball on your glove side in order to make the transfer, the turn, and the throw as quick as possible. If you catch and turn towards your arm side, you're having to turn a full three quarters around while also having to restart your momentum from nothing because your turn eliminated all the momentum that you had. So check it out. If I'm receiving the ball on my glove side, all I have to do is catch, transfer, and throw without even turning even a little bit. I set up here, I catch, I transfer, I throw. If I catch and I turn to my arm side, it looks like this. I catch, I turn all the way here, and I stop my momentum, and I have to restart from zero, which is so much longer than catching glove side. Boom, boom. You see how that works? So one more time, if I'm setting up like this and I catch the ball and I turn arm side, I'm turning all the way three quarters stopping here and then restarting my throw from zero, which is so much longer than setting up glove side, catching the ball glove side, and transferring like that. So that is the most important thing when you're a cutoff player is to turn glove side and catch the ball on your glove side, just like that, to make it a lot quicker to relay the ball. When you turn to your glove side, you're basically already in your proper throwing position as you're catching the ball. All you need to do is turn your head, transfer the ball to your hand, and throw the ball. If the outfield throw is off target and you have to move, use your feet to move into a position where you can catch it on your glove side. So if I'm setting up like this and the throw is over here, I am not going to turn like this and catch it here just to turn all the way like that and throw it on my arm side. I'm going to set up like this, and if the throw's over here, I'm going to move my feet like this to still catch it on my glove side. If I'm here and the throw's over here, I'm going to move like this. No matter what, I want to catch it on my glove side. So I need to use my feet and move my feet to wherever the ball is to catch it on my glove side. Obviously, there are some situations where if the ball is all the way over here and you completely go like this, you can go with the momentum of catching the ball like this and throwing it like that. But if you can, you want to catch it on your glove side and use your feet to move where the ball is in order to help yourself catch it on your glove side. The last thing you want to do when you catch the ball is you want to keep your momentum and build momentum and flow into the throw. If the outfield throw is on point, you want to shuffle your feet towards your target as you're catching the ball. So what does that look like? You're here, and as the ball is coming in, I'm going to shuffle my feet towards my target as I'm transferring and throwing the ball to keep it a very smooth and flowing motion and have all of my momentum going to my target. So that looks like this. If I'm setting up like this and the outfield throw is on point, I'm going to be shuffling, catch, throw, boom. Just like that. So I'm shuffling towards my target as I am receiving the ball. What I don't want to do is I don't want to catch it and then shuffle, right? That's starting from zero. You don't want to do that. You want to build that momentum as you're catching it just to make it quick and a powerful throw. So as the ball is coming in like this, I'm shuffling here. I catch at the same time as I'm shuffling and I'm throwing. That is a much quicker and a much more powerful throw than if you catch the ball and then you shuffle to throw. So your feet are very important when you're a cutoff player to make it as quick as possible. Move your feet to make sure you catch it on your glove side, and if you can, make sure as you're catching it, you're shuffling towards your target to make a more powerful and a more quicker throw. Let me know one thing you learned today about being a cutoff player. Did everything make sense? Are you ready to take it out to the field and throw some people out? I'd love to hear from you. And I have some free guides I'd like to give you before we go that are down in the description. One of them is a free baseball equipment sizing guide, and it explains all the equipment that we use in baseball, but more importantly, it helps you find your perfect size for you. And there's also a free two-hour practice plan for coaches, complete with two practice blueprints that helps you make your practices more efficient if you're looking for some help organizing your practices. Make sure you grab yours down below. 
Thanks for spending some time with me today. I hope this video showed you exactly how to be an effective cutoff player and you're ready to take it out to the field and throw some people out. I'll see you next week for another edition of the Bullpen Bulletin.